Okay, so the this is uh, my, uh, I think my last uh, uh, leg of a uh, trip that I began about three weeks ago. Uh, so this is the last copy that I have of the of the report. The report is available on uh, online, and uh, for those who are here, uh, these are uh, this is a memories uh, card, memory mm -hmm. stick, stick. That yeah. is. Uh, the whole report is is on here so if you if you if you want to uh, get get one there is a price though that uh, you have to go online and and click on the on the <coughs> on the website so i get some points uh, for it okay <laughs> <laughs> all right so the the let me let me give you a few words of introduction <coughs> uh, this is a report a second edition of a, of a report that is the series is called global development horizons and it uh, focuses uh, on uh, long-term trends, uh, emerging long-term trends that may affect uh, uh, development in one to two uh, decades uh, from now. So we're not we're not concerned with the with the short-term uh, uh, crisis uh, um, issues. The first uh, edition, 2011, is also available online. Uh, it was uh, about multipolarity. The new uh, global economy is has been for some time and will be even more so in the future uh, multipolar uh, uh, global economy. The uh, poles of growth, uh, uh, all of them in the future will be in uh, in developing countries. This um, current edition is on. Uh, we sort of open the hood and try to figure out what what uh, is what the engine looks like of these uh, new poles of the global economy and in specifically we look at the saving and investment activity now <coughs> when uh, it's important to um, clarify what i mean by saving and investment i uh, look at the real side of of both the saving and investment the investment I consider uh, investment the accumulation of capital, so the uh, new building, construction, capital goods, uh, infrastructure, and so on. And savings I consider the resources that are not consumed today, and they are uh, basically the excess of uh, income to uh, or to by of consumption. And um, I'm not considering savings as the uh, income in uh, or, or or flows or stock in the, in the bank. Okay, so it's it's the real side of the of the story, not the financial side. The report is organized around um, three chapters, and um, which basically are uh, addressing three uh, three main questions. And those three main questions uh, are summarized here, and I organize my. Uh, short speech about uh, these uh, answering these three questions. The first uh, question that we ask in this in this uh, report is about uh, uh, the uh, investment activity. Where uh, investment activity will be uh, higher? Which countries basically will drive investment in in the in the next uh, two decades in the multipolar uh, world economy? The second question is uh, concerns that. Uh, uh, quite a few have uh, that uh, uh, with an aging population, uh, the savings may not be sufficient uh, to fund all the investment activity that uh, uh, that there will be demand for capital for in the future. So uh, that's 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 how uh, we ask why we ask this uh, second question. And the third one is basically. <coughs> Once we have uh, figured out uh, the investment side, the saving side, we ask how do savers and uh, investors are uh, matched in, in the future. So we'll look at uh, uh, um, excess uh, investment or saving in one country that generates capital flows, and we look at the a little bit at the intermediation of uh, uh, the uh, savings uh, and investment. The I conclude with some. Um, of the policy challenges that we uh, identify. Uh, so let's let's look at the first question. Okay, so let's consider the tr first chapter basically about investment. 
the whole uh, study basically started from uh, uh, this graph by uh, observing uh, these these trends. On the uh, horizontal axis, we have time, and on the vertical axis, we have the uh, amount of investment as a share of uh, global uh, GDP. Okay, so you see that it, if you group countries into two groups, high income and um, developing, uh, the uh, up to basically uh, 2000 or, or, or uh, mid 90s, uh, these um, shares have been uh, fairly constant. Okay, there has been some fluctuation, but not that much. The in terms of uh, uh, not in terms of what is on the axis here, but if you think of every one hundred dollars that were invested from the sixties to the mid nineties, twenty dollars were invested in uh, uh, developing countries and eight dollars were invested in uh, high income countries. Uh, from um, the end of the nineties, there has been an acceleration, strong acceleration of uh, growth in um, in um, uh, developing countries and that has led to an increase in the demand for capital and uh, what we call a regime shift so uh, from the 2000 to 2011 12 today uh, well beyond the, the 09 uh, 08 09 uh, financial crisis but it before that there has been this this uh, regime uh, regime shift and today the share that I mentioned are about 45 to 55 and uh, what we see uh, going forward is that although not at the same pace but we see that uh, the the share will triple and will get to sixty dollars to uh, forty dollars so from 20 to 60 is a triple of the share and obviously the GDP uh, global GDP is increasing so in terms of amounts is 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 obviously much much larger. Um, the interest interestingly, the uh, composition uh, effect cancels out cancels out at the global level. So the investment rate at the global level remains at about uh, uh, 23, 24 uh, uh, percent for for the whole world. But there is a lot of churning uh, underneath uh, going on, and this is not uh, just a story of. China, okay. There, you have uh, what uh, is uh, what are the, the numbers without without China. Now, uh, the churning is uh, also visible if we open up uh, uh, the group of countries. Uh, here, you have uh, the investment rate uh, by uh, different uh, countries and regions, uh, and. Uh, you see that um, in um, in terms of that uh, data up to 2011 is uh, historical data, so is observed, and uh, from 2012 onwards is uh, uh, coming from our uh, model exercise, which I can talk uh, briefly if you're interested. But um, the uh, as you can see, most countries are increasing uh, up to about. 2015 or uh, or near that date and then we see uh, the demand the investment rate to decrease uh, slightly uh, from then onwards and the but what is important from uh, of, of this picture is to see that certain countries uh, decrease faster than others sub-saharan africa is one can one set of countries that does not reduce its uh, investment rate. Uh, the uh, the other important thing is to observe that the rates are much higher for uh, uh, developing countries than high income countries. High income countries is the lowest uh, 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 investment rate uh, thereabout. Uh, the drivers for this investment rate or for the demand of capital, uh, um, a, a major one is um, shown in this uh, picture uh, that. Um, summarizes the difference in the in growth uh, for the two groups okay so uh, high income countries uh, growth uh, will uh, remains fairly low in the in the coming decades and the growth rates of developing countries will uh, keep up and will be 
there will be uh, an increase. Uh, th th sorry, there will be a, a constant, uh, lar fairly large growth differentials between the two groups, which helps uh, uh, getting towards a convergence in terms of uh, income levels. Now, <coughs> the there are reasons why these uh, uh, there is this growth differential. Uh, the uh, in the in the chapter we go uh, into the details, but basically there there are two uh, the productivity catch up. So there is still quite a bit of space for uh, developing countries to adopt the technologies that uh, increase the productivity of factors and also the availability of factors. Demographics are favorable for um, uh, developing countries vis a vis uh, high income countries. If I ask you a question. Um, such as uh, in um, in the 80s uh, of 100 uh, uh, people entering the new 100 people entering the age working age group uh, of people that are between 15 and 65 uh, of 100 new ones how many are from a developing countries in the 80s you have uh, an idea of how many are they of 100 in the 80s, so 20 years ago? Third, <laughs> pardon me? 10%? Ten, no, no, much more, much more. They were about, uh, they were about uh, <coughs> uh, 75, 80, okay? So in the 80s. So uh, in seven years from now, of 100 new people entering this age group, 15 to 65, in 2020, they will be of 100, they will be all from mm -hmm. developing countries. In 2038, about that, 110 will be from developing countries, and minus 10 will be from uh, high income countries. So these, uh, these uh, are projections by the United Nations that we use to calibrate our demographics, our labor supply in the model. Uh, they are based on uh, fairly non-contentious estimates of uh, fertility, mortality rates, and uh, they also include some net uh, migration. Uh, there are, the UN have, have two variations, but they get very different further out in the future, r r in up to 2040, 20, uh, 20, 2045, the, the, two the two variants in their forecast are similar. So uh, what I want you to, c what I like to call your attention is really that these um, demographics factors are going to happen no matter what, uh, what uh, whether the euro will be there or the pound will still be there, they will happen non nonetheless, okay? And so these are, these are, um, uh, these are coming. <laughs> so the, uh, um, up up to now, I have been talking about uh, s flows, investment uh, flows, but obviously with the, uh, there is an effect also on the stock. As, as uh, countries invest more, they accumulate faster their capital stock. Here you have the stock of the capital stock in 2010, which is about uh, uh, two, uh, 166 trillions, and the uh, pie chart shows you the amounts for the different groups. Uh, and you see that high income countries have about 66%, uh, almost two, two thirds of, uh, of the capital stock is there. In 2030, uh, is gonna be half uh, uh, the, 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 the share of um, high income countries. And you see that uh, China I increases quite, quite a bit uh, and, and takes a lot of the space. Uh, uh, and the capital stock, in total increases almost twice, uh, goes to 316 uh, trillions. Now, if it's interesting to note that if we were to calculate an in an a distribution index, an inequality index on the distribution of uh, the capital stocks in 2010 and in 2030, the inequality will be going down, okay? So there is a, a, a more equal distribution of the capital stocks and the investment flows in the world of the future. But that doesn't say anything about what happens within the countries, which I will um, 
talk about in a, in a moment. Um, now, in the before moving to the second question, in the report we look at other things uh, in terms of the investment. We look at the infrastructure needs of uh, of uh, countries uh, of developing countries uh, in terms of um, uh, roads, uh, transportation, telecommunication, uh, etc. Uh, we look also at um, um, what happens to investment by sector, which is where the investment opportunity, the, the demand for investment is highest. And we have a view that uh, it will be in the service sector, um, although that poses a challenge because the service sector is normally the sector that is more regulated, more um, where uh, competition is, is uh, stifled and, and uh, and uh, so it's it, it can be a challenge to realize this 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 investment. Now that's um, but I don't have the time to go into the, all the details. It's it's all in the report. Now in let's move to the second uh, question. And uh, uh, there was a couple of years ago, I think, uh, a, a report by the by McKinsey uh, on um, the Global Institute. Uh, which was titled The End of uh, the Era of Cheap Capital. And they were without um, a model, but with some uh, extrapolation uh, of trends, they basically held a, a came to a conclusion that the because of aging, savings will decrease. In um, investment uh, needs are still very high, uh, and um, there therefore there will be not enough savings to fund all these investments, and therefore there will be a pressure on the on the price of capital, so the yield will will rise. We don't uh, agree with that, and uh, what we find is that um, yes, there are uh, demographic uh, pressures, but the world will not run out of saving. Uh, for two reasons. Uh, one is a composition uh, uh, reason. Uh, in um, the, um, the, the composition reason is basically as, um, as developing countries uh, increase their size uh, in the world economy, uh, they um, substitute for uh, uh, the reduction of savings that happens uh, across for all countries, but, uh, but especially for uh, high income countries that are aging faster. So the uh, saving rates for developing countries are much higher than the saving rates in high income countries. And since they are becoming bigger and bigger, they account for, they contribute more to the global pool of savings. So in terms of Global in terms of the whole world, there will be uh, uh, enough savings. Uh, the um, the this graph here shows you the uh, ratio of working to non-working uh, population, and um, the this is the sort of the inverse of the dependency rate, uh, and um, you see that. Uh, Different regions reach their peak uh, at different time. Their peak is a different height, and uh, the steepness of of getting to the peak is different. So, think of uh, the uh, East Asian Pacific, they, uh, where, where uh, China is the giant there. And basically, the one-child policy has allowed them to reach a very high peak fairly quickly. But there is a cost in that policy that the uh, the demographic dividend uh, is going to last uh, fairly shortly and it will decrease uh, their uh, this ratio will decrease fast uh, latin america is uh, uh, reaching the maximum about uh, in 2020 and in about uh, 20 30 uh, 32 india will be the country with the highest ratio of um, working to non-working population. Uh, in the future, 
the the sub-Saharan Africa will probably surpass it uh, 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 since, as you can see here, is still a fairly young uh, country and, and it still not has not reached the peak even in 2050. Because of this heterogeneous uh, um, situation across countries, the the the, the saving uh, rate. Uh, uh, are 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 moving in in different ways, and when a, a region is aging, another one is uh, is compensating for that. In uh, <coughs> in this uh, in this graph, you see the saving rate uh, in for different countries. You see that they all uh, they all decrease. You see various things. One, that the East Asia rate is very high, and that's China. China. There is a whole section on China savings. We have a whole report on China in 2030, so I can't go into the details there, but there is there are, they have a very high savings, both the private sector, the housing sector, as well as the corporate sector for various reasons. We, we foresee it going down, uh, but it's still fairly high. This, the, the, the second is that um, Sub-Saharan Africa is the only group of countries which has a saving rate that doesn't uh, reduce in the in the forecasting period, uh, and again, high-income countries have a quite lower uh, saving rates than um, uh, the other uh, developing regions. In in absolute terms, here you see that the um, there are two axes. There is the right axis is for China, and uh, which is another scale, and the left axis is for the others. Uh, China is uh, the larger uh, savers, and uh, by 2028 uh, or uh, the India will be the second largest uh, savers. I was in Delhi um, two, two two weeks ago, and uh, they were very proud about this, that being the second. Uh, although they are always comparing themselves with China, but. Um, uh, they uh, they will contribute 1.8 billion trillion sorry uh, uh, dollars uh, to the global savings, but they are two and a half times uh, smaller than uh, than China by then. But they are overcoming uh, the other countries uh, which have large economies like the U.S. Uh, and, and Japan. Um, uh, this this shows you uh, what happens to the interest rate. Uh, uh, this this just gives you the um, again the saving rate by the two groups, uh, high uh, developing and high income countries, and uh, the um, behind this there is the demand for capital, and we calculate the what happens to the yield. So. Uh, is coming down as as you observe in the first uh, part of the graph up to 2012, which is observed, and then it's it's fairly stable. The stability is a bit misleading because uh, does we don't really have a global uh, yield. is more a weighted average of different ones where the weights are uh, the capital stocks. But um, it's true that there is no. For very few regions, there is an excess demand, and so there is a, a growing yield and uh, an excess supply in, in, in some others, so or a, a decreasing yield. Um, <coughs> okay, uh, I have been talking about the saving, f uh, especially the private sector savings. There is a concern about the public sector savings, and this is just a graph illustrating that. Uh, for a bunch of countries, we have more countries in the report. And here you see that uh, aging uh, will increase the cost of uh, um, uh, the cost of uh, pensions. Uh, here you have a cost of pension as a percentage of, of, of GDP. But these are not really um, um, behavioral projections. So there is no. There, there, these are more accounting projections where the in the in uh, there is no behavior, no reaction. Uh, so if everything remains the same, just the, f the pure demographics, the fact that there are more old people and, and the policy remains the same, increases the expenditure for some countries is, is, fairly, is fairly high to begin with and it reaches levels that are certainly not sustainable. Brazil is one example. Uh, 
uh, we are uh, uh, discussing with the with country with the country they they cannot afford the generosity of the system that they have uh, 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 Thailand is not here but it's 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 also uh, uh, another interesting case and um, um, sub, sub, uh, India and South Africa there they have very not very generous not very high coverage but all, all that can change and in the report we go into into that they there are some countries for which this is going to be a, an important challenge and um, also because there are also increasing expenditure for um, health related expenditure and they cannot be they are not almost compensated by uh, uh, s the reduction in, in age expenditure uh, okay so the last um, the last uh, question is uh, okay i have uh, quickly illustrated what happens to the uh, saving and investment and uh, one basic uh, uh, consistent story that comes out is that okay there will be a lot of investment uh, opportunity and demand for capital in uh, developing countries and um, a lot of savers will also be in developing countries so matching them should not be too much of a problem but that's not really um, the case uh, because if you um, consider the uh, financial intermediation uh, proxy here by the gross capital flows uh, the role of developing countries minuscule uh, here you have the trillions of um, uh, dollars that are uh, cross borders f as, as investment um, uh, up to 2011 uh, I think and the um, uh, developing countries play a very uh, small small role mainly um, mainly the intermediation and the flows are all to uh, high income countries but in the future uh, this uh, is going to change has to change we are as i have told you we're going to move to a, can a, a situation where not 20 not 40 but 60 uh, dollar to 100 dollar are invested in uh, developing countries so uh, the role of uh, uh, capital flows in developing country will increase and uh, in a, uh, in a, a subsequent scenario which uh, is uh, this one uh, the which is which is a scenario where there is even more rapid uh, convergence between uh, poor and, uh, and rich countries uh, they share is going to increase even further now this is not automatic uh, the the uh, getting these flows requires developing uh, the uh, financial sector uh, and uh, developing improving improving uh, in institutions and all that so it's not it's not a guarantee that this uh, is going to happen so there are uh, things that have to happen but what is what is you should take out of this is that I, as i said in a f in a world which where the developing countries will be much more important uh, uh, losing not doing not reforming not uh, being uh, uh, not adopting the correct policies etc the cost of not doing so will be much larger than not doing so uh, in the current environment um <coughs> the just to show you that these the figures that I showed you previously is not out of whack. Uh, this is the same kind of projection, but instead of being in trillions, is in terms of percentage of GDP. And the two scenarios that I showed you are the six and the eleven percent by 2030. Uh, the six being the conservative convergence, the gradual convergence; the other one being the rapid convergence. And the gray line, sort of a diagonal line that is there, is just a trend. If the trend, if what has happened in the last uh, 12, 15 years continues, it's going to be much higher than uh, what we foresee that is already uh, uh, pretty big. So our, our forecasts are not uh, completely uh, out of, out of um, context, okay? Uh, they are fairly conservative. <coughs> now, um, a, 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 a few quick words on in terms of uh, uh, policy challenges. One the i already mentioned the cost of not uh, uh, 
uh, adopting the uh, improving uh, the business climate, uh, improving the financial sector that uh, uh, the institutional quality is very high in in this uh, in this um, future world. Uh, here you see one scenario where the institutional quality at the left is kept constant, uh, or almost constant, and the other one where the institutional quality improves uh, by um, basically adopting policy, that improving policy so that the distance from the US is covered by a quarter, a quarter of the distance is, is covered. And the other one is the, is the um, uh, investment. And so if you don't do that, uh, if in sub-Saharan Africa that is, instead of having 550, you have six, instead of having 660, you have 560 billion. So $100 billion uh, are basically the cost uh, opportunity of not doing these things. Now, uh, I talked about the inequality being across country being improving, but what happens within uh, countries is worrying us uh, quite a bit. Uh, wealth, uh, capital stock, and savings tend to be still very concentrated in a small proportion of the population. Here you have Mexico in 2010. Uh, we have data at the micro level for other four countries. Uh, the in 2010, 70% of all the savings are in the hands of the 10% of the richest Mexican. The poorest 10% actually this saves. The saving rates is uh, the saving contribution is negative. So that's very worrying because if you are in these percentages, in this percentile, very in the poor percentile, you can't accumulate any any stock. You can't invest in education and you are in a classical um, poverty trap, okay? Now, it can be the case that uh, you are in the lowest decile because of a shock, uh, and so next year it will be someone else, but if you do the same analysis with the uh, level of education, which is much more stable across the life cycle, the least educated are also the, the, those who have least savings and, and, and or zero savings, so that uh, is, is permanent. This is the Lawrence curve for savings and for uh, income. The red is, is savings and it dominates the blue, so it's much more unequally distributed. Okay, Finally, is it, is it the, the, you? The, if, you, if, you, if, you, uh, if you do something with education, you have uh, an, immediately an immediate boost here. You, you see that the, the, the education more, more education, more uh, dis distributed more equally, increases the saving for everybody uh, up to five percentage points in this case. Um, uh, there, there are issues on uh, uh, aging that I mentioned on the public uh, pension story. I don't have the time to go through this, uh, which shows another additional pressure besides the uh, increasing share of old people is the fact that old people live in their own households when they are uh, the when income increases and so they have to uh, rely on on a public system or 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 asset si based system not an informal multi-generational system uh, finally there is um, uh, there are issues that we identify in the capital flows as uh, as the share of capital flows uh, increases very much for uh, developing countries. The, this means basically that there will be many more south-south uh, uh, capital flows, and this requires more coordination of the monetary policy, of the fiscal policy, uh, exchange rate policies, uh, the, um, the currencies that uh, w these exchanges will happen in the future when will not be anymore just the dollars or the euro. So there are uh, international issues to, to discuss and all of that is discussed uh, in the report. The report, as I said, is available online at uh, Capital for the Future. This is the, the URL. It's, uh, there is the full report. Uh, there are data that can be downloaded and, and played with. Uh, if you miss uh, the Italian accent, there is a four minutes uh, slideshow that I uh, discussed the whole report in four minutes mm -hmm. uh, and other things. So you're welcome to, to look at it. Yeah. Thank you.